This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Censorship is tricky business. Does covering the Statue of David's wiggly jiggly bits help uphold decency and good taste? Or is it better to let them dangle about in the name of progress, artistic intent and mild giggling? The censorship of information, human rights, free speech, all of this would make a deep and fascinating video. And this is not that video. <laughs> this is about cartoons. I'm very dumb. So forgoing the question of good or bad thing and just accepting it as thing, media knows that there are certain rules they have to abide by to get a certain certificate rating or to be allowed to be broadcast. And in turn, they have found ways to actually use censorship way more creatively than if they were uncensored. So please. Won't somebody please think of the children? <laughs> The problem with censorship based on morals is that morals can change. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. This casting couch gag in the outtakes of Toy Story 2. You know, I'm sure I could get you a part in Toy Story 3. This was cut following the whole Weinstein thing, which feels kind of unnecessary, but I ain't dying on this hill. But it does illustrate how unpredictably attitudes can change. So how can you arbitrate morality? Many have tried. 4Kids TV introduced American audiences to many anime shows for the first time. But as the block was aimed for 7 to 11 year olds, it had to severely censor a lot of material to comply with that rating. Guns were changed to pointing fingers, cigarettes became lollipops, rice balls became jelly donuts, and I don't know why. Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut. For Yu-Gi-Oh! 4Kids actually created a piece of story lore which doesn't exist in the Japanese media. Basically, if a character was meant to die, they'd often instead be sent to the Shadow Realm. We shall destroy you while the rest of my body waits on the border of the Shadow Realm. A place of darkness and eternal torment. So, hell. 4Kids basically invented hell to protect the children. <laughs> But this means that depending where in the world you watched it, you got totally different stories. You dueled me and lost, and now you must all wander the Shadow Realm. And this isn't the only time that four kids meddled with the actual storyline for censorship reasons. It's a whale! But take a look at that iceberg! This young girl's self sacrifice death scene in Sonic X was changed to where the girl just leaves. Maybe we'll meet again someday. It's okay, kids. She didn't die. She's gone on holiday to the Shadow Realm. In the 1930s, Hollywood movie studios had to follow the Motion Picture Production Code, also known as the Hayes Code. Basically, a list of rules movies had to follow to stay moral. And this stuck around for over 30 years. There's some wacky rules in here, like no belly dancing, no jokes about religion, and no interracial couples? Jesus Christ. Ah, shit. Ah, fuck! It wasn't until Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho in 1960 did we finally get the very first shot of a flushing toilet. A big day for cinema. In 1938, James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart starred in Angels with Dirty Faces, a gangster movie which makes you wonder how does a genre of moral ambiguity fare in an overly moral set of rules. For example, under these rules, gangsters weren't even allowed Tommy guns. And if there's one thing gangsters are known for, is following the rules. Other rules involved limiting the use of firearms and murder. Ah, the two genders. The normal workaround was a shot of the gun firing, followed by a shot of somebody shot. In Angels with Dirty Faces, they got around this by having Rocky in the reflection of a mirror. I just like this ingenuity. It's taking a restriction and making something stylish out of it. It's cool. Likewise, because Rocky has shot someone, the Hayes Code demands that he has to be brought to justice or shown to be in the wrong. But the audience will side with the character because these were the villains and it's narratively justified, so both morals are at conflict. So towards the end, they have Rocky shoot policemen during his escape. The killing is actually really unnecessary. There is no need for Rocky to do that. But it means that narratively, it's more justified to bring the character to justice. A bit like a certain pointless bombing scene in a certain Marvel, certain show. And speaking of morality... What's this? I'm on the moral high ground, and I'm here to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. 
Squarespace allows you to build your own websites with its all-in-one management system. This means you can easily drag and drop content like images and videos and then rearrange them however you please, even if you know nothing about programming websites. Want to know how I used to make websites in the past? Like this. Terrible. Squarespace comes with a bunch of templates pre-made but fully customizable so you can make it exactly how you want. I'm using it to make my professional looking portfolio which can even work on mobile devices. So the moral of the story is to head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your first website or domain use the URL squarespace.com slash edache or simply use the coupon code edache and you'll get 10% off. Now how do I get down? Help! The Hayes Code had a knock-on effect with sitcoms and family shows as showing a couple sharing a bed was too hot for TV. So separate beds became something of a classic sitcom trope. The bastard child of the Hayes Code, known as the Comics Code Authority, was born in 1954, which governed what could and couldn't be said in comics. It's been abandoned since the 2000s, but this all came about thanks to the book Seduction of the Innocent, which actually suggests that Batman and Robin are a gay couple because they share a bed together. And if sharing a bed makes you gay, then I am gay for insomnia. Also head lice. The current US system, the MPAA, is heavily Puritan when it comes to sex. What strikes you immediately about the MPAA, and I'm sure I'm the, you know, 300th person to say this, is how much more they seem to be concerned about sex than they are about violence. So PG sex was often just alluded to, such as a visual metaphor or innuendo. I don't think that's gonna fit. Just a little more, dear. <laughs> Got it. This carries over to nudity as well, with how things allude to nakedness without actually showing nakedness to keep the age rating down, such as framing, off screen, in silhouette, covered by conveniently long hair, the Ken doll, the pixel box, or the classic sensor bar. Deriving from redacted text and identity protection, it can be used to more alluring effect than had the subject been fully exposed. This physical censoring extends to being obscured by props like Austin Powers and Neon Genesis. In fact, the Simpsons movie is an interesting example because after an elaborate sequence of censoring Bart's bits, it then censors everything except Bart's bits. How did they get away with that? While it's generally censored on TV, it was permitted in cinemas. It's even on Disney+, Plus, which had previously covered up Daryl Hannah's bare bottom with a crudely edited giant hairy arse in such a way that would make four kids proud. Oh, that's my little dude. The British Board of Film Classification says that natural nudity with no sexual content is acceptable. So a bare naked Bart got by just barely. Penis! Violence is a cornerstone of slapstick and has been a part of cartoons for decades from Tom and Jerry to Bugs Bunny. And whilst the use of guns fluctuate being in and out of favour, it is no less violent in other ways. Which makes you wonder, why bother cutting the guns at all? This is usually down to imitatable behaviour. No way should this ensuing fight contain the image of a potentially harmful, hurtful or psychologically disturbing physical act that could be found imitatable by an impressionable child viewer. (sighs) Kids are unlikely to get hold of a tank or a bazooka or rocket into space, so that kind of heightened ridiculousness is totally acceptable because we know it's not real. It's just a cartoon. Growing up in the UK, guns to me were just like rockets and bazookas in being this ridiculous thing that only happens in cartoons because nobody really has guns readily sitting in their pockets. You know I hate guns. Guns are for wimps. But shootings, especially those involving kids, continue to be a problem. They've become real now and it can't be seen to have a cartoon character just shake it off. So even if the kids aren't imitating the cartoons, it's hard to make guns just a kid-friendly comedic device. Lasers are okay, though. It's a fine line to tread, because on the one hand, we should push back on overzealous Puritans trying to nerf our heroes, but can TV really have an influence on violent acts, or were they likely to do horrible things anyway? Some say it's the parents' job to police what the kids watch. Others say media should be considerate about their influence. I think the answer is somewhere in the middle. This is why violence is often very heightened and kept clearly comedic in tone, such as cut into black, the fight cloud, or focusing on people's reactions instead. I'm just John Q. Public now. 
All right. All right. He's had enough. Somebody help the captain. As for gore, it's usually kept PG by changing the color of blood to something non-human or by having no blood at all. You can get away with blood if there's a degree of removal from reality, such as clearly fake blood or having a show within a show. Alternatively, nobody really dies and everyone is fine. But PG media can get away with a surprising amount of horror elements, like Gravity Falls. Is the show all about mysteries with hidden messages and decoding clues? It invites the viewer to look deeper into the show as there's a lot more hidden under the surface. For example, in an early episode, the character Stan has a wax model of himself that loses his head, which leads to Stan holding a funeral for it. This seems like just a wacky character doing something silly until you realize later on that he is an identical twin mourning the loss of his brother. Now, this episode has a whole new, much darker context. Had this episode come out after learning about Stan's brother, it might have been too much raw trauma to have been televised, but by keeping that reveal a secret, it has its clues hidden in plain sight. Gravity Falls can get away with its darker elements because it gives a lot of trust to its young viewers. At no point does it feel like it's tricking or deceiving them. You see the world through the eyes of the kids, and nothing feels too far out of their depth to be too scary. So maybe this is the kind of imitatable behavior that should be encouraged. Go on, son. Go fight that bear. Probably should have given him a gun first. For US media, swearing is fucking strange. The UK regulatory board, Ofcom, has a list of every swear word including slurs and notes if and when it can be used on television such as pre-watershed, post-watershed, or with strict contextualization. The U.S., however, doesn't have such a list. I wanted a list, because nobody gives you a list. So much of it is censored by, uh, vibes, I guess. Non-sexual swearing is permitted in PG media. H-E double hockey sticks? Hell, 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 hell. Some are allowed to say shit. I want some serious shit here. Or even fuck. It's fucking chucky. The general rule to stay PG is that one fuck is allowed, but even that has to be non-sexualized. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. You can say, what the fuck is that? But you can't say, well, you know. Multiple fucks, no matter their context, would increase your rating, but even that has some leeway, so the only consistency is how inconsistent it is. So, generally, swearing gets censored, but there's fun to be had with this. Like the bait and switch, implying you're gonna swear, but then don't. Oh, son of a bit, son of a bit, son of a bit, 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 gun. (laughs) You thought I was gonna say, son of a bitch, didn't you? (laughs) There's the cutting away at the last second. But a popular choice is the trading the curse word for a much safer word, so you can sound like you're swearing without swearing. Holy mother forking shirt balls. Smack off. Take off! What the hell is going on? Mother hugger! Sort your funking life out, mate. Did you fun my wife? Is that what you're saying? Uh, fun. Not funny. Why? Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. <laughs> The alternate to this is swearing in another language. Now pick a mouth, open it and say... (coughs) What? My mother was a saint! Get out! So, I'll bet my droid. But of course, there's the bleep. You fucked up. Sometimes trade it out for another sound effect, but it does the same job. Crabs is a... Whilst the bleep is the most famous censorship of swearing, it has a major flaw. You can anything you want and make it sound way worse with a bleep. I could whatever do I blop. For example, on Lower Decks, an adult animated comedy set in Star Trek, following this bromance moment, the character responds with God speed, you crazy f- She says fucks here. The showrunners censor the swears themselves, not the network. But because of the combined context and the way the bleep was sweared, it has led some to think that she says, well, the other F word. Yes, it's just one syllable, not two, but that's hard to scan in an animated lip sync. And even when I watched this episode with my wife, she also assumed the same thing. Showrunner Mike McMahon has since shared the clip uncensored. Godspeed, you crazy fucks. But it goes to show that sometimes censoring something can make things sound way worse than they actually are. 
The band 303 are a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. They're best described as being like Lonely Island, but without the parody. They're no stranger to explicit lyrics, but there's a song that they intentionally do not use swear words for, called Touching On My. What's clever about this song is that the bleeps form part of the melody of the song. Then the lyrics are sung around the bleeps to imply swearing almost like a parody of radio edits, which typically censor songs way more awkwardly. Because they actually work in the censor bleep as part of the actual song, it works better than if they just used curse words in the first place. Want to hear a clip? Well, here you go. Oh, uh, let me try that again. Here's a clip. Here's a... Oh, damn it! YouTube will copyright strike the video if I actually use the song. It's almost like... I'm being censored. Hmm, if only there was a creative way around the censorship, a workaround for using copyright music. I could do a cover version, but it would suck and be big cringe, and I would never do that. Good, I gotta go. I finished with the show. If you wanna me, I won't say no. Touching on my, but I'm touching on your. You know that we are gonna, cause I don't give up. No matter what your feelings are on censorship, I hope I've shown that limitations and restrictions can spark creativity. Or terrible cover songs. Maybe this was a bad idea. Did you just say the F word? Special thanks to the following patrons. Aiden f***ing Thomas, Ashley f***ing Kinder, Kevin f***ing Green, the mother f***ing Mo Al Kasemi, Sloan God f***ing Goolcraft, Salix, f***ing Paul Nipmeyer, Harry f***ing Potton, Decker f***ing Dane, Joel f***ing f***ing Jennings, Aaron is f***ing chummy, and Mark f***ing Connor. And if you want to f***ing support me, then please consider doing so on Patreon.